All right, let's get right into it. When we talk about zero trust security on mobile devices, there are really two major philosophies duking it out. On one side, you have Apple's locked down integrated iOS. On the other, you've got the hardened open source fortress that is Graphene OS. So what we're going to do in this explainer is a technical deep dive analysis of their security architectures. The goal? To figure out which one really holds up better against the kind of sophisticated zero-day threats that define our work today. You know, the entire conversation around mobile security has fundamentally shifted. It's not just about patching known bugs anymore. That's table stakes. This quote from the Graphene OS project hits the nail on the head. The real fight now, the core challenge, is defending against the unknown. We're talking about zero-day exploits. These are the precision weapons used in targeted attacks, and they demand a completely different defensive strategy. Okay, here's our roadmap for this session. We're gonna start by defining the modern mobile threat, just to make sure we're all on the same page. Then we'll dissect Apple's integrated security model. After that, we'll take a deep dive into how Graphene OS hardens the Android core. We'll put them head to head in a direct comparison, and then we'll wrap up with a framework for how you can choose your own digital fortress based on your threat model. Right, so first up, the modern mobile threat. The subtitle here says it all. We are way beyond simple malware. The context is absolutely critical because our adversaries have evolved. We're not just fighting off widespread opportunistic viruses anymore. The primary concern, especially for high-risk individuals and organizations, is now these highly sophisticated, often state-sponsored attacks. Think zero-click exploits, the kind that can compromise a device without the user ever doing a single thing. So, this really brings us to the central question of our whole analysis, doesn't it? Given this advanced threat landscape, which security philosophy actually provides a more robust defense? Is it the tightly controlled closed source walled garden that Apple has built with iOS? Or is it the transparent, maximally hardened open fortress of Graphene OS? Let's start our analysis with Apple's iOS. If you want to understand its security philosophy, it all comes down to one core principle, tight vertical integration. Their defense is a multi-layered strategy that spans from their own custom silicon up through the operating system and all the way to their cloud services. We're going to examine this defense in depth model across three critical layers. First, we'll look at the hardware root of trust established by the Secure Enclave. Second, we'll dig into specific OS level mitigations designed to counter modern exploits like Blastor. And third, we'll cover the service level protections they built for platforms like iMessage and iCloud. So Apple's direct answer to the zero click threat is a technology called Blastor. You can think of it like a, like a detonation chamber built right into the operating system. All the untrusted data coming in from a service like iMessage gets funneled into this highly restrictive sandbox. Inside that isolated environment, the data can be safely parsed and validated. The whole idea is to contain and neutralize any potential exploit far away from the core OS, which massively increases the difficulty and cost for an attacker. Now, moving up to the service layer, we have iMessage contact key verification. And let's be crystal clear here. This is not a tool to prevent phishing. Its purpose is very specific, to defend against sophisticated nation-state level attacks that might target Apple's own iMessage servers. It provides automatic verification and will alert you if an unrecognized device is suddenly added to a conversation, which could indicate a man-in-the-middle attack. For higher assurance, you can even do manual, out-of-band code comparisons. This brings us to data protection in iCloud, which is a really big deal. By default, with what Apple calls standard protection, Apple holds the encryption keys in their data centers. But there is an optional mode called advanced data protection, and it fundamentally shifts this model. The crucial difference is that the key store moves from Apple servers to your trusted devices. This extends end-to-end -end encryption to the vast majority of your iCloud data, including backups and photos, making it cryptographically impossible for Apple to access. The security benefits of advanced data protection are pretty obvious. By taking Apple out of the key management equation, you eliminate a major vector for third-party data access, whether that's through a compromise or a legal order. But this enhanced security comes at a significant operational cost. So what exactly is that critical trade-off? And here it is. The user assumes full, absolute responsibility. This is the core principle of zero trust in action. With advanced data protection on, Apple is mathematically incapable of decrypting your information. So if you lose your device passcode, your recovery contact, and your recovery key, well, that's it. Apple can't help you. The data is permanently, irrecoverably gone. You become the sole custodian of your digital life. 
All right, now let's switch gears in turn to Graphene OS, which represents a fundamentally different approach. We're moving from a closed ecosystem to a hardened open source operating system built on top of the Android open source project. And it runs exclusively on Google's Pixel hardware, not for branding, but for a very specific security chip inside. And that chip is the Google Titan M2. Just like Apple's Secure Enclave, it's a discrete, physically isolated coprocessor. It's got its own RAM, its own flash storage, and it's completely separate from the main application processor. This physical isolation is key. It acts as the hardware root of trust, verifying the OS integrity at boot, securely storing cryptographic keys, and enforcing hardware level limits on brute force attempts. It's the bedrock that all of Graphene OS's software hardening is built on. A core philosophy of Graphene OS is aggressive attack surface reduction. The idea is simple. The most secure code is the code that never runs. So features like NFC and Bluetooth are disabled by default. You have to explicitly enable them. Even more critically, when the device is locked, the USB-C port defaults to a charging-only mode. And this isn't just a software toggle, it disables the data lines at the hardware controller level, providing a robust defense against things like malicious charging stations or forensic tools. Graphene OS also implements a whole suite of deep, systemic exploit mitigations that go way beyond standard Android. We're talking about a hardened C library and kernel to fight memory corruption. Address space layout randomization is significantly enhanced. The system proactively zeroes out memory after it's been used to prevent data leakage. And crucially, just-in-time compilation, which is a common vector for exploits, is completely disabled. It's replaced with full ahead-of-time compilation, which eliminates an entire class of vulnerabilities right off the bat. Now, at the heart of this hardening is a component called hardened underscore malloc, Graphene OS's custom memory allocator. And this thing is really a masterclass in defensive programming. It's designed specifically to make entire classes of memory corruption bugs unexploitable. Metadata is stored out of line to thwart heap overflows. It can deterministically detect invalid free calls. And its use of zero on free and randomized quarantines provides powerful mitigation against dangerous use after free vulnerabilities. It's incredibly robust. Now, one of the most significant features from a usability perspective is Sandbox Google Play. Graphene OS brilliantly solves the app compatibility problem by allowing you to install the official Google Play services, but with a critical difference. They get installed as regular, unprivileged applications. They're confined within the standard app sandbox with no special permissions and no deep hooks into the OS. This gives you access to the entire Play Store ecosystem without compromising the core security and privacy model of the operating system. Okay, so we've examined the architectural details of both platforms. Now let's move to a direct comparison. We're going to focus not just on individual features, but on the underlying philosophies that really drive their security design and implementation. And really, you couldn't have two philosophies in more stark contrast. On one side, iOS is all about security through tight integration and control within a closed proprietary ecosystem. It aims to deliver a high level of security that's also seamless for the user. Graphene OS, on the other hand, prioritizes maximum security and granular user control above all else. It's an open source, hardened system that will aggressively reduce attack surfaces, even if it means sacrificing some default convenience. This table gives us a nice granular breakdown. You can see both leverage strong, dedicated hardware security chips. Both have robust sandboxing, but the major divergence is in user control and the default state. Graphene OS provides extremely granular toggles for things like network and sensor access, and it defaults to a secure off state for many features. iOS, by design, defaults to a convenience on state and offers much less granular control. So, this leads us to our conclusion. The choice between these two platforms isn't just about which one is better. The optimal decision is a function of professional risk assessment. It requires a really clear understanding of your own specific threat model. And this is the ultimate takeaway here. There is no universal most secure operating system. It's a myth. The correct choice is entirely contextual. It depends on who your adversaries are, what their capabilities are, what you're trying to protect, and, just as importantly, your own tolerance for operational complexity. Let's put it plainly. For users and organizations that need a high level of security integrated into a user-friendly and robust ecosystem, iOS, particularly with advanced data protection enabled, is an exceptionally strong choice. However, for technical users, maybe journalists, dissidents, or anyone with an extreme threat model who requires absolute maximum control, transparency, and the most aggressive hardening available, Graphene OS is the superior option. 
We'll end with a final question for you to consider. As threats like zero-click exploits become more widespread, will we see the security models of mainstream operating systems start to converge and adopt the kind of aggressive hardening seen in Graphene OS? Or will the gap between user-centric and expert-centric security paradigms just continue to widen? The future trajectory of mobile security really depends on that answer.